Okay, so we are, this is Darius, everybody, if you mm. haven't met Darius. Hey, guys. Um, Darius and I were, we went to uh, t seventh grade together. That's yeah. where we met. Um, 12 years old or something. We were 12. Um, but we seemed much younger emotionally at the time. Although Darius uh, developed early, he uh, had some, I guess you were, right? I mean, you had a deep voice and everything. I was and, a man. And you were a man. So I was Darius, a man, a man amongst boys. Darius evidently had been the victim of some sort of strange hormone therapy in a laboratory, uh, which caused him to um, bloom. As Are you say, still referring early. to manhood as some strange hormone problem? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> some, 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 people, people. <laughs> yeah, some people don't relate to manhood in the same way, you know. So, Darius, mm. here we are. We're in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we're driving in our rental car, which, by the way, I think that they might have recognized me in the line or something like that because they upgraded us to a Toyota 4Runner. And we made a decision which I think was... We were forced, honestly, we were forced into this. Well... Because when you're given a 4Runner, you really... Yeah, so we're going to try to find an, an opportunity to go off-roading before the end of the day. But also we made, we did something that... Are you paying attention to the directions? More than you. So we made, a, I think, a pretty impulsive decision, which is we decided to prepay the tank of gas, which we both know is... Prospect Avenue East, then turn left onto East 18th Street. So we're going in circles. Turn left onto East 18th Street, then yes. turn right onto Euclid Avenue. Oh. Okay. So um, <clears throat> we, we prepaid for the full tank of gas, which we know is a scam. Everybody knows that's a scam at a rental car company. Like getting insurance. Total scam. But we fell for it. So now it is our objective to use exactly the entire tank of gas. Well, to me, to make it clear, it's only a scam if you don't use the whole tank of gas. And we all understand that using an entire tank of gas in a set given period of time is actually quite difficult. It's hard to do. Well, it's not. a little like Brewster's Millions. You know, he's given a lot of money and he has to spend. It's not so easy. Well, we're going to do it today. The only, the trick is you have to also get to your final destination. Our final destination is Cincinnati and we have to get there without fueling up. Well, we can't that, fuel up. If we fuel up, we lose. So we have to do a lot of coasting. A lot, we used to do this actually. We have to coast. Whenever there's an incline, yep. we have to coast in this big thing. I was just coasting back there. Um, so... Half mile. We're half mile away. Okay, so we're going to our first stop, which is a coffee shop on um, uh, called um, what's it called? Uh huh. And uh, Pasha's Pasha's Cafe. Um, do I have anything in my teeth? Let me see. Mm hmm. Yep. Good. Um, and we are here. Cincinnati is only an hour away, somebody said? That's not true. An hour away from something. It's definitely true from from their perspective because they're an hour away from Cincinnati. Oh, I see. They weren't saying that we're... It's a little away. like when someone, you know, advertises a product and says it's in nearby right. Orange, which happens to be what... But nearby, you know, it's whatever. Good. It's nearby to someone. And for you who wrote in, you are probably an hour away from Cleveland. Thanks for sharing. Uh, someone's saying hi from Wichita. Someone is saying hi from Hungary, which I think we can both agree is not close to Cincinnati. Um, all right. Well, um, we are um, here in Ohio because Ohio is a, uh, a critical uh, swing state and um, we are trying to get out the vote for, um, for this election so that things... Um, don't go horribly wrong in the next uh, 36 hours. It's really come down to the wire, hasn't it? Are you? No, you're not talking about the gas tank anymore. Nope, you're, I've you're, moved you're, on. You're, I've moved on. Just making sure. Um, look, there are people they could vote possibly. Let's find out. Okay, you're gonna have to ask quick. Are you guys gonna vote? You gonna vote? Yeah. Good. Already voted. Vote. All right. But Misha, honestly, that was a little lame. It was I mean, lame. I don't think you should heckle or you should not, like, bully people. But the, it felt inconclusive. We don't know who they voted for or if they were just saying, yes, we voted to get that creepy guy to stop talking to them. That's right. I think it's safe to say in the future when you ask, are you going to vote? I think we move to the next part of that, which is who are who you are voting you for? for? And then if they 
you know, if they say Trump, I think our, you know, we we could be, we should be. Oh, fuck, man, this is a crowd. This is a crowd. Uh, yeah, but they all seem to be at. Oh, that is our. Place. That's the thing. That's a crowd. Here's the thing with this election, and I think we got to get clear on this right now. Where's a park? This is park? unlike. Any... Why don't you? Why don't you go? Oh, fuck. Do you want to do a U-turn? Does anyone feel what I feel when I'm talking and he then starts talking about It's hard. Parking? Your voice is like an irritating <laughs> alarm going off in my ear. Is it or is it your conscience? Is it something deeper yep. that you feel like listening to makes you feel small so you tune it out? Well, listening to you uh, just makes me feel queasy. a little decency don't there's a child right there don't scream like that hi how are you hi wow so this uh cafe is too small mistakes were made we can't move because we're at a uh stoplight What's this about? I thought we were here for something bigger than you. No. no. <laughs> um, all right, guys. We're going to go try to find a parking spot, and then we'll come find you in a second, okay? All right. Actually, maybe I should just get out. You're going to leave me alone? Don't leave me alone. I'm going to leave you alone. Don't leave me alone. Wait. Misha, how do I... Bye, Darius. Fuck you. See you in there. <laughs> Hi guys! Hi. How's it going? Go yes! Woo. Hi! Hi. Hi. How, are How are you? What? It's her birthday. birthday. Happy birthday! Well, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna go inside. If I start taking pictures right now, it might be a, a, a hi. Nice to meet you. Hi guys! I'm gonna go uh, in here. I'll come back and say hi. Hi there. Hi. How you doing, sir? Good. How are you guys? Good. Hi. How are Hi. You? I think there's parking somewhere. Good luck. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Hi guys. Oh my god. Oh my god. Love so, you. How are you? Hi guys. Hi guys. How are you? Bye. Oh good. my god. All right. My phone's all messed up. Oh my god. Um, what do you know how to work these things? Why is it acting? It's yeah, it's it's like it's all distorted. Wow, oh, that's weird. Like that. It's too warm. Oh yeah, same. Is it overheating? Is that what's it's going on? Overheating. Um Well, it's in your phone. Okay, hi guys. Um, is there a representative of the Hillary campaign here? No? I can be if you want me to. <laughs> Perfect. That's not what you want. Um, all right. Well, we're going to then have to wing this, uh, so to speak. I'm, I'm going to go over here. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi guys, how are you? Well, I have this, um, will you be my camera person? Thanks. Um, if, um, screwed up right now and I don't know why. I don't know. Do your do your best. Ew. All right. Yeah, I know. It looks disgusting, doesn't it? <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, maybe we should just stop and start it again. See if that <laughs> Is anyone seeing my live stream right now? Yes. I don't know. We all watched it. And does it look kind of fucked up? No. <laughs> okay, because it does on my phone. But if it looks okay on your phone. It looks okay. We were all right. All right. So don't press finish. It was okay. so funny, right. your voice was echoing all around. I can't Hi. Hi! 
So, are a lot of you students here? Yes! yes. No, no. Um, no. What fraction of you are of voting age? Who here? Yes! Good. I'd like to hear that. Who here is not of voting age? Do any of you who are not of voting age have relatives who are? Yes! Do, do some of you have parents? Yes! So you can still potentially function as a voter by getting those of you, uh, those uh, around you who are old enough to vote. You can twist their arms. Uh, when I was a kid, I forced my mother to stop smoking cigarettes. So maybe you can get your mother to, to vote. Um, if you're here right now with your mother, it's weird that I'm talking to you and not your mother. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Um, so I am here be um, because Ohio is a super, super important state in this election. It could go either way right now. Um, it's uh, kind of uh, scary to me because I think that this election actually is transcending politics in a lot of ways. I think that this isn't a uh, traditional red state, blue state question. It's, it's a question of um, whether we're going to elect somebody who has uh, a career of uh, civil service behind them or if we're going to elect uh, someone who is potentially um, a, a danger to the world, a demagogue who is um, Hi, Darius. This is my uh, very oldest and dearest friend, Darius. Uh, we're we're uh, driving across the country. I took off my sunglasses, too, because it's totally douchey to have your sunglasses on. <laughs> you, yeah, I, 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 I,
and being a very, very hardworking first lady. Um, and then she has subsequently gone on to have um, a very successful career as a senator in New York State. She has served as Secretary of State. Um, if you were to, um, if you were to be an employer on Monster.com who came across her resume, um, you would probably phone her up and say, well, what are your salary requirements? Because she is so incredibly well qualified um, to be the president. Not only has she um, actually been in the White House before, um, but she has served in many different other capacities in government and has demonstrated um, a tireless devotion to civil service for over 30 years. Her opponent is someone who has demonstrated, as far as I can tell, nothing but devotion to his own self-interests. Um, even throughout the course of the campaign, the things that really seem to stir his ire are personal attacks against him. He is more concerned about whether a foreign totalitarian ruler find, uh, sees him in a favorable light than, than if that foreign totalitarian ruler is a danger to the United States of America. He likes Vladimir Putin because Putin has, quote, said nice things about me. Well, that's not how we should make decisions about foreign policy as a country. That is incredibly dangerous, that kind of mentality. Um, recently, as you may know, in the last 10 days or so, his campaign has finally managed to wrest control of his Twitter account from him. So Donald Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump is no longer tweeting because uh, his campaign managers um, determined that he is too erratic and impulsive to manage his own Twitter account. And if somebody is too erratic and impulsive to manage their own Twitter account, I for one don't want them managing our nuclear arsenal. We, we also are standing on the precipice of a historic moment. We could potentially elect the first female president in our nation's history. It is, it is appalling that we have never had a major primary, ma major party candidate who was a female, let alone that we have not yet elected a woman to the presidency. So that in and of itself is an incredibly compelling reason to vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, it's not just her long and very, very impressive resume um, and her long history of civil service um, but, and the wisdom that that brings with it to the office. Um, I, Donald Trump will be uh, a, a rudderless ship if he takes this office. He will have no idea what he's doing. Um, Actually, don't they say she's the, she's, she is, the, she's the most qualified candidate in our nation's history? No one, I mean, no one has ever had as much shocking. experience. But, but I've never, you guys, I've been friends with Misha for like 79 years, 70, uh, and I've never seen Misha care like this. There's been a, He's elections, never seen me care about anything. Not seen Misha <laughs> care in general. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that has everything to do with how qualified she is, and I think it has everything to do with how not just unqualified he is, but how immoral and how potentially dangerous he is that has motivated, that I've seen motivate this guy who frankly doesn't get mot motiv motivated by About anything. About anything. I, I'm, I'm generally, like in close circles, I'm generally considered the laziest person that any of us know. <laughs> Um, and most apathetic. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Young man? Yeah. No. What's your name? Brian. Gabriel. Hi, Gabriel. How are you? How old are you? Five. You're five? Are you going to vote in the election? <laughs> My daughter is uh, four. She's almost your age. And the other day, I asked her what she was going to be when she grew up because that was a question that I got a lot when I was a kid and it seemed like a really important question to me when I was about your age. I was thinking about it a lot because adults were asking me all the time, what are you going to be when you grow up? And so I would say, I changed my, my choice a lot. I was going to be a train conductor for a while. I wanted to be a writer for a while. Um, 
and I asked, but I realized that nobody's asking my kids these days. For some reason, it's fallen out of fashion. People aren't asking my kids what they want to be when they grow up. So I took it upon myself, and I said, Mason, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, Dad, when I grow up, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> shouldn't have shared that. And I just went into tunnel vision. I felt like I had been a complete failure as a, as a parent. Uh, and so I put her into foster care. Um, yeah, it felt weird disowning a four-year-old, but I had to do it. Um, does anybody have any, um, any questions or comments or things that they want to say, complaints? Yes. Oh, complaints, yeah. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts on third party voting? I mean, I know you're obviously here for, like, Hillary, but yeah. I, everyone I talk to tells me if I don't vote for Hillary, I'm just throwing away my vote, and I kind of want to know why. That's an awesome question. That's a great question. Um, so, third party voting, of course, I mean, obviously, everyone is free to vote for whomever they want. That is one of the most beautiful things about our country. Um, but. As, as this election unfolds, there are only two candidates emerging who have any credible chance of winning. So, uh, a vote for a third party candidate is a vote that is what is called a protest vote at this point. It's your, your candidate is not going to win the presidency, for sure. However, you're lodging a protest vote, which is saying, I don't want either one of the main, the, the main party candidates. The problem with that is um, pure mathematics. When you have a vote and you have a choice, you can, you can either put that vote to a third party candidate, which doesn't improve Hillary's uh, situation and it doesn't improve Donald Trump's situation, um, you are essentially not voting for one of the two who could win. And if you vote for Hillary, then you're, uh, you're tipping the scales away from what I consider an incredibly dangerous alternative. I know that a lot of young people have said that they're not, you know, totally fired up about Hillary Clinton. I think that as the campaign has moved along, people have got increasingly excited about her, but there's still a lot of people who feel, you know, somewhat apathetic or for whatever reason not drawn to Hillary. And, and frankly, one of the reasons that people speak to is that, she, you know, this thing that I'm touting as, as an asset of hers, that she has all this experience, a lot of people say, well, I want an outsider. I don't want somebody who's so well entrenched in government. And that, I, under, I understand that perspective, that makes sense. Um, but when you don't vote for her, you're giving Donald Trump a better chance of winning the presidency. And I think that that is far too dangerous an option with your vote you, to, to not do everything you can to ensure that he doesn't become the president is, is a very dangerous move. Um, I don't remember who it was, um, but there was a, a late night comedian who uh, had a little riff that I think made a lot of sense. He said, this election is sort of like you're on an airplane and a flight attendant comes up to you and says, you have two choices for your meal tonight. You can either have a steaming pile of shit with broken glass in it, or you can have the chicken. And a lot of people are saying, well, how is the chicken served? And the truth is, it doesn't matter. You're not going to want to eat a steaming pile of shit with broken glass in it. So vote for the chicken. Vote for Hillary. Because you are in, you're, you're, you're setting yourself up for a world of pain and potentially, potentially truly catastrophic circumstances on a global level if we, if we elect Donald Trump. It is far, far too risky. Um, so that is, my, that is my take on it. Um, but, you know... Uh, you have to mull it over. You have to you have to dig into the information as much as you can. Another thing that's been very frustrating about this election is that Donald Trump has managed to discredit established media, um, discredit the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, these major news outlets that have things like journalistic ethics and fact checking and integrity, and they're the last bastions of information in this you know, world where we are flooded with viral information online and people can't parse out what's true and what's not true. And if you have information that's coming to you from the New York Times, you know that that has been well researched by professional journalists who know what they're talking about, who have fact checked, and he has delegitimized the media. So it's very hard for a lot of people to understand what the facts are. 
in this election. And a lot of times we're seeing stuff like people will throw up a website that looks like it's using journalistic font and looks like it's the framing of a newspaper. And so people see that and they think, well, this must be true information. Breitbart News is publishing this. Their name has news in it, so it must be news. But it's not. It's false propaganda. And that's a very, very dangerous aspect of what's going on in this election. So I encourage people to do your research. But when you do research, really look to legitimate news sources. It's not the biased liberal new media. It's fact-checked, journalistically integral news writing. That's what we're, we're dealing with. And that's where you need to get information. Um, and I think that it's telling that virtually every major uh, news editorial board has come out in favor of Hillary Clinton in this election cycle, even newspapers that have never in their 100 year history endorsed a Democrat are coming out in favor of Hillary Clinton because they know that Donald Trump is a nightmare. Yeah. Yes? Um, I, I think that there are a lot of different factors that have gone into Donald Trump getting into the position that he's in now. I think that there is a large swath of America that feels disenfranchised, that feels underrepresented, that feels like the economy is not working in their favor. Um, largely, Donald Trump is appealing to people, you know, if you look at the demographics of it, he's appealing to people who have only a high school education, so it's a little bit um, harder for them. That you know, a lot of a lot of his supporters don't have the same critical thinking skills. Um, uh, the, you know, to be able to say, "Oh, this is real information. This is false information." He he dissembles quite a bit. He lies quite a bit d during his speeches. But um, a lot of people don't know that the, that the, that he's speaking untruths. You know, a lot of people. I think a lot of Americans operate from the. Um, assumption that if a politician is standing up there and talking to me and talking to me in a passionate way that they're telling the truth or that what they're saying is based on the truth at the very least and he's sort of thrown out the rule book on that and he'll just get up and say whatever he wants I mean just uh, just yesterday he was decrying President Obama who had been at a rally and uh, and and it was a, a pro Hillary rally and there was a Donald Trump supporter in the crowd and the crowd started turning on the Donald Trump supporter. And Obama shouted down his own crowd. He shouted down the Hillary Clinton supporters and said, this man, this is part of our democracy, is based on free speech. This man should be allowed to speak. Don't, don't shout him down. That's an incredibly powerful thing. That's an incredible powerful yeah. thing for him to do. And, it's, and it shows really amazing integrity on his part. But, uh, but Donald Trump turned it around the next day and said that, Obama had become unhinged at the re rally and was shouting down the Trump supporter, which is blatantly false. But it doesn't matter. He's propagating these falsehoods, and there's no fact-checking. So people believe it. And I think that that's part of what he's built his campaign on. I think he's also built his campaign on the fact that he's not a politician. He's not polished. He'll just come out. He'll speak off the cuff. That seems like genuine to people, and that's refreshing. It is nice to see somebody who's up there who's not trying to say the right thing, who's not trying to be PC. That is refreshing. Um, unfortunately, the things that he's saying are racist, misogynistic, and terrifying. <laughs> yes, sir. I know we, I think we all pretty much support you here on electing Hillary as our president. What do you say about, since our federal government is not just a president, what would you say about electing other officials that can support her and not lead us down the road that Donald Trump wants? Um, thank you. I mean, this is a huge issue in this election. It's the down ballot voting. Um, and this is something that I think it's very critical for us as an informed citizen, citizenry to look into, to do the research, to talk to people who are more informed than you. A lot of us don't have time to parse out all the details of all of the candidates and all of the ballot measures that we're voting on. So if you know somebody who does keep themselves well informed, or you can turn to certain websites. I actually don't know in Ohio, and I should find this out, um, what the best resources are, because there are some great websites, state by state, that say, what, you know, help explain, do you know, are you, okay, uh, that explain state by state what all the ballot measures are and who's running and why you should support which candidate. Um, but, you know, if, if, we, if we can get, uh, if Hillary can, you know, turn the Senate 
uh, blue, I think that we will actually have, we'll stand a chance of having a government that can actually move forward and move past the gridlock that's been plaguing it for the last eight years, except six years. Um, yes, yes. Hi. No, don't turn that way. <laughs> wait, wait, speak up, speak up. Shout. <laughs> She's asking if this is, if I, you're asking if I'm doing this on a purely voluntary basis? Yeah. Or if I've been blackmailed or coerced into doing this? <laughs> Okay, I gotta come clean. The truth is, I'm here because I did some bad shit when I was interning in the White House. <laughs> Hillary Clinton has a stack of photos in her office of me doing incredibly compromising things in the Oval Office. And so I am here um, because I have to. Um, no, I, yes, of course, this is total. I'm, I'm here because I'm, I'm here because I am frightened for our nation's future. That's why I'm here. Yes. Oh my God, I didn't mean to shout so loudly. I thought this was like some accessory, some accessory you were wearing. Oh, he's used to it. He's used to it. You have a pretty loud home. We always have seven million people in our living room. Oh yeah, us too. Um, I was curious whether um, you had heard about the app that they just started going that um, for the people who want to vote third party as a protest, yes. they're trading their votes with states that are already not swing states like California. Mm -hmm. Do you know the name of that app? Because I did read about it, but I don't know the name of it. I could look it yeah, up. Look it yeah, up. look it up. All right. Um, I would, and then we'll share that information. There's a, actually an interesting program going on, young woman, um, for people who want to vote third party, but who are in a state where they don't want to, to squander that third party vote. You can actually trade your vote with somebody who's in a state that is definitely going blue. So you can, and they will say, yes, I will vote third party on your behalf in my state if you vote for Hillary in your state. And so that third party is still getting a voice. Your protest vote is still getting registered, but you're not endangering the entire world. <laughs> Uh, we'll share the name once yeah. you find it uh, of the app that can allow you to do that trading. What's that? Trump Traders. It's called Trump Traders? Yes. The app is called Trump Traders. <laughs> Trump Traders. It sounds, it's a, it's a, so that could be a great like resource. Like trading or like I'm a trader? Trader. Trading. Uh, well, I think it's spelled you're the same both ways. So <laughs> you're, 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 you're both true. Yes. Alright, so mine's a two-parter. Okay, two-part question. So, you were a White House intern. Did you have access to classified information? Did I have access to classified information as a as a White House intern? Like, where's the bathroom? Stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. I, I, weirdly, they didn't give me that access. Um, I did get the sense when I was interning there that Bill Clinton did want to get my advice on a lot of stuff. <laughs> But I think he was afraid that it was going to make the other interns jealous, so he, he didn't uh, ever talk to me. Um, I, um, no, but I did, um, I did steal the passes, the little security badges to that, that get you into the White House. And uh, I was like, oh my god, this is such a great keepsake. This is a great little memento. I have this little like oh, security yeah, badge from the White House. Show. I'm gonna not. I'm not gonna turn it in at the end of the day because I want to have this souvenir of my time in the White House. And when I was uh, I was moving after college, all my stuff out of my mo my room at my mom's house, and I found a little security badge. Oh, like, oh, look at that little memento. And then I read, uh, possession of this outside of the White House is a felony. And I was like, oh! <laughs> Uh, but fuck you, statute of limitations. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, I, you know, there's a, there's been a lot of um, a lot of noise made about um, Hillary Clinton's emails or the improper use of the server, why she was using a private server. Um, these are details that I I don't think that any of us have the answers to. Um, I think it's clear that, and she has said this, that that was a poor choice, that she shouldn't have done it. 
Um, I also think that nobody who has been in public service under extreme scrutiny for more than three decades um, is ever going to be um, without any black marks on their record. Like, that's something that she did that she shouldn't have done. And there are other things in her past that she's done that she shouldn't have done. But that's anybody who's being proactive um, in a very complex political landscape is going to make mistakes. That, that mistake that she made so pales in comparison to the litany of things that Donald Trump has done. Donald Trump has a, a, a trial coming up in December for statutory rape. Um, but we're not even talking about that because he's done so much other bad shit, it gets lost in the, in the shuffle. So I think talking about Hillary Clinton's emails is kind of like asking how the chicken is prepared. Like, yeah, we understand she did something bad, and uh, but it, it's so it's so insignificant in comparison to the the litany of things that he is. I mean, the fact that he was twice prosecuted by the Justice Department for violating the Fair Housing Act. He was maliciously and intentionally refusing to rent his properties to black people in violation of the law. And when he settled with the Justice Department, two years later they came back and sued him again because he was still doing it. That is unbelievable. And that, coupled with his, his incredible misogyny that he has a long record of, um, the fact that he has had over 3,000 lawsuits in his illustrious career, uh, that he has gone through bankruptcy a half dozen times. Like, these are not, you can't, unfortunately for him, you know, you can't bankrupt, you can't file for bankruptcy when you're running up, up the United States. It doesn't doesn't really serve the country very well, um, and that seems to be his his way of dealing with problems. Um, yes. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> The power to do what? He wants to bring back conversion therapy. He wants to overturn the, the, the allowance for gay marriage. There's so many things that he wants to... I mean, he's, Donald Trump has spoken very openly about wanting to fill the Supreme Court with extremely conservative, socially conservative justices, justices that will outlaw abortion, justices that will overturn you know, the right to, to gay marriage in America, justices that will take us backwards on a lot of, uh, a lot of fronts that we've made tremendous progress in the last decade. Um, and that is something to be truly afraid of. That's another reason also to be very vigilant about down ballot voting. And if we can turn, if we can turn Senate blue in this election, we can get a good Supreme Court who's going to fight for the kind of values that are so crucial to human rights that you're talking about. Um, but yeah, it's it's critical, and it's critical not to be complacent. And you know, if you're if you can, you know, persuade your parents to vote. Oh, they voted. They're good. Voting on the good side, but they just. <laughs> not and not also, good. also, Misha, can we just speak to your point just a little bit more specifically? Conversion therapy. I mean, nobody's really talking about conversion therapy. This is actually what these people believe in. Okay, so anybody here, anybody thinking about a third party, <laughs> let's think about this collectively for a second. Conversion therapy, telling a group of people that they need to change, subvert who they are. What does this remind us of, if not Nazi Germany? Yeah, it's what does this remind us of? Why is this not the biggest news that has ever... Why are we talking as if this is, I might throw, vote for another person, I might vote for a third party, when this party is talking about conversion therapy? You might as well be telling a group of people that you're going to shove them in an oven and burn them. Because you know these people, and I know these people. That's what you're doing. Fuck that. Yeah, that's enough. All right, what time? Does anybody know what time it is? Okay, we're late. 
so we have to go. But, but, we chose this location for a very specific reason today. We are right near a polling station. You can vote. You can vote right now until 2 p.m. So if you have not yet voted, go vote right now. You can vote until 2 o'clock, so go stand in line. And there is a long line, so get, get, get your feet on the ground, line up, and vote. Get your friends to vote. Get your families to vote. Do not be complacent. This is too important, guys. Bye! Thank you! Thank you, guys. We have to run. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey Misha, I'm gonna get out before you. Okay, so I can't stand it. Hi Misha. I'm well. How are you? Come with me, please. Hey, thank you guys. I'm sorry it was a little crowded. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got you a sticker. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I'm here um, supporting Hillary Clinton and trying to get get out the vote. I'm, I, as everybody here in Ohio is aware, and Cleveland is, uh, is aware that uh, this election is very close in Ohio, and a lot of eyes all across the country are watching Ohio um, because Ohio could very well turn the election for the entire country. So I'm here. Um, because it's such an important state, and if I can get like three or four extra people to vote for Hillary Clinton, I think my time will be well spent. Why do you think this younger generation is so important to getting out and voting? Um, I think that um, this is, for a lot of the people, I mean, we were just in a, in a coffee shop here that was crowded, we're very near a university, there's a lot of young people here, young people who are voting uh, for the very first time. It's a very strange election to be witnessing for the first time. Um, and I think that it's really critical that this generation see that voting and being a part of the political process is a very important part of being a citizen. And if I can rally some people together to vote because they happen to like my TV show, I'm going to capitalize. Finally, what do you love about Cleveland? What do you like about our city? Well, I just got here. So the jury, I, I haven't explored it. The coffee uh, was excellent. The coffee was fabulous. <laughs> yeah. um, and we're going to explore very briefly on our way out of town. The weather is lovely. Um, the guy at the rental car office was really quite nice. <laughs> so <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank have you. fun. Enjoy Cleveland while you're here. Thank okay? you very much. Good Take luck care. getting out of this. Bye. Nobody Bye. get hurt, Misha. okay? Thank you, Misha. 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 Thank you for bringing him here. Oh, hey. You know, he does what I say. <laughs> I don't know who he was, this random guy I wanted me to get him. I don't know his name. Oh, I love that. I love that you don't know his name, that's great. It was Josh. I read the back of it. You know, at this point, I think I'm going to turn this on to me because this is just useless on Misha. You're just trying to... Hey. Do you do some cute poses, like yeah, cute poses, cute poses. <laughs> I just really like wanted to say thank you for what you said about LGBT stuff. Like that meant so much to me being in that community. And oh, geez, don't. Nah. Hit me. No, oh you know what? Gosh, it's it's so it's I enough. Really it's enough to talk about that one issue. If yeah. you just talk about that one issue, you know that we confuse uh, these elections with so many issues. You talk about one issue. You talk about one candidate who's talking about conversion therapy. Yeah. That's enough. We don't need to talk about anything else. That makes him unelectable. You don't need to talk about how he wants to keep an entire religious group out of our country. You don't need to talk about how he wants to do all of these many immoral, straight up immoral things. That's enough. Yeah. So yes, we Thank talk you about so that. And You're welcome. Because it like, meant so much to me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It means a lot to me too. I'm sorry, I know you had 
hands are full, but can you add that to your gifts? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, is that what I have become? Is that? Take care. I'm glad you cared. That was a real powerful. You got the crowd to cheer at the end. Well, one of us had to do it. <laughs> Where did he go? Where did Misha go? Oh, I should, like, like, like obviously I can just follow the crowd, <laughs> yeah, you know. You can. You'll find then, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for doing this. This is kind of really important for our, for our country. Yeah, it's really important to, uh, to us and to everyone we know, yeah. right? And it's important for the entire world to know that, like, we're not going to go and, like, attack everyone. It's important yeah. for, that's right. for the safety of everyone. That's right. It's critical. Um, I'm going to turn this camera so I can actually see where I'm going. Hey, Misha. Hey, Misha. Thank you for Misha, coming here. Misha, okay. I have the most 